Okay, so you want to print one of these starships. And it's a complex model, but your gut tells you that you can do this without supports. Or with minimal supports and minimal infill. So let's go over the process of how I go about doing this. This is the Star Trek Vulcan Ciroc Class 12000 scale starship. Made by Outcast RC, thing number 2153335. So first things first, we gotta download the starship. Here it is. End to Vulcan Ciroc Class STL. We download that. Okay? So here it is, we have the Ciroc Class Starship, and we bring it into Simplify 3D. Now, first thing you're going to notice is that the ship is on its end. But let's leave it like that for a moment and go over it. Okay? So here we are, looking at the starship. And something dawns on me. You know, this thing is pretty symmetrical if I print it on its point. Okay? So let's do that. Let's see, is it X? Yep, X 90 degrees. Center and range. So here's the starship on its end. That actually looks pretty good. I mean, that should print just fine if I could print it in two halves. You see, from here up looks good, and if I flip it over, from here down looks good. So, here up, that looks fine. That'll print without any problems. There's no serious overhangs. The only serious overhang is this piece here. And um, if I print this half, again, no serious overhangs. All right, so what if I make that overhang the split point, okay? That's actually not that hard to do. Now, the first thing I do is figure out scale, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is drop it into the bed. Well, let's just make it 300% to start with. Okay, is that even remotely gonna fit? Oh yeah, that'll fit. So if we start dropping that down, into the bed. There we go. Oh, I got plenty of room to go. Let's go 350%. You don't have to get exact, just get close. Dropping it down to roughly. And yep, it's still below my max height of my printer. Okay, so I can do this at 350%. If I split it into three pieces, I can go even larger because as you can see on my X and Y, I have more room to play with, all right? But I'd prefer to have simpler, meaning just two parts. So I'm gonna do just two parts. Now, there's something you need to do first. These models are usually extracted from games. Now, if you were to go in here and go into mesh and separate connected surfaces, um, yeah, it's going to take about seven or eight minutes. There's a lot of parts in here. All right, so just assume it's going complex models like this that are this detailed aren't made by people typically. They're extracted from something. So they're extracted from a game or some kind of resource. And those resources don't care if it's a bunch of interconnected parts. It just merges them together. But your 3D printer is going to care. Your slicer is going to care. So you load up NetFab. Um, it's service.netfab2bs.com and create a Windows Live ID, log in, and you're going to upload 3D model. You're going to pick your enterprise model. It's going to begin uploading it, processing it, and it's going to give you a download link. And after you're done downloading it, you'll have a second file here called the same thing, fixed. So the original file is 3.65 megabytes, the new file is 3.96 megabytes. It's actually bigger. <laughs> but now it's a single piece. It's all together, all one piece. There's no interconnected parts. Now if you load that part into Simplify 3D and go to separate connected parts, nothing will happen because there's only one part. That's important. Because otherwise it's gonna come up real screwy, okay? Very easy to do. Anytime you suspect a model, or if you're getting weird results from a model, just send it through NetFab. It'll probably fix whatever's wrong with it. Now, what we're gonna do here, now that I've selected my scale, that I think 350% will work, now I want to make this sit right on the bed. Okay? So you see that grid? See how I can still see the grid? Now watch what happens when I drop it. Grid disappears. But I dropped it too much. So 102 is too high, 103 is too low. So let's go 
There. Now we're just inside the grid. I could probably go a little lower. So let's go four five. Let's go four zero. Let's go three five. You want to see the grid and then back off. Okay, the grid appeared, so we're going to back off to four zero. Trust me, 0.05 millimeter don't matter. But this grid needs to disappear. The way you know you've got it right is we slice it. Prepare to print. Now in Simplify 3D, when you slice a model like this, it ignores everything below the print surface. So it only counts everything above the print surface, which is exactly what you want. There you go. Now, we can see here, we do have the outline of that overhang, which is exactly what we want. If this isn't a perfect square, and you got to lower your model a little bit until it goes just far enough into the print bed for you to see the square. And that'll be where we want to cut the model. And now we just print this. Now a couple things I notice. See this here? See how this area is really spread apart here? See how you can start seeing these lines here? Now let's bring down the slicer. By the way, when I do models like this, I use three or four perimeters. Okay? See how now? Okay, you see that right there? Let me zoom in a little more so you can see this. Okay. Let's go by layer. Okay, see here we have outlines. Now watch what happens. See how it starts to extend these little wiggle lines? These little wiggle lines here start extending out into your model. These here. There's nothing underneath those. Okay, when they're really short, they'll hold up. But as these get longer, this will fall because it's empty, okay? Normally, infill would support this. But if you print something this big with too much infill, it's going to go crazy. It's going to use a lot of plastic. So as we go further and further up, you see, now that's way too big. That is going to fail, okay? So let's see. Right about when this begins to close, we need to add some infill, all right? We need to add infill until... We stop seeing those lines. See it closes up, closes up, closes up. See how it keeps adding these little extensions here, trying to close up the curve? Those will be holes if you don't allow them to close. Close up, close up, and there we go. Right there, there's no more extensions. That means the perimeters are sufficient to support the upcoming layers. So it doesn't have to add any more extensions outward to support the next layer. So from there to there, see this little flat area? So from there to there, we need to add infill. So we come back out here. So basically right around here, so right around here, we can stop infill. So let's pick up here to be safe. And at the bottom of this, we need infill. So what we're going to do is turn this so we can see the top of this curve here, okay? And we're going to go to the variable support wizard. So tools, variable settings wizard, we're going to bring that down right there. That's good enough. So there's where it's going to start curving inward. We can go up a little bit. I'd say that's good enough. We're going to add a location there, and then we're going to come up until we cover up that curve right about there. I go a little bit past it just to be safe and add another location and we're gonna tell it the split process. So now we have these multiple processes. So this process is below this line that we picked where we don't need any infill and this process is above this line we picked where we don't need any infill. Yes, this is an overhang, but it will print. It's close enough to the model that with the three perimeters, it'll print just fine. I've already done it, so we know it works. Um, now what we do is we make sure this one has infill of 0%, but this one here, what I usually do is if I need strength, I use grid. If I need coverage, I use rectilinear. Here, we need coverage. So I think maybe even 10% will be enough if we use rectilinear. Rectilinear, the way it works is it does your cross grid like this. Grid is this and this every layer. Rectilinear is this one layer, this the next layer, this one layer, this the next layer, and there's more of them spread out. 
So you're using less plastic, but you're getting more coverage. Matter of fact, I'll show you the difference. So let's go grid 10%. Let's process it. We're going to select all, continuous, go. Now let's open it up, okay? Now there's no way to stop it from infilling this, but that's okay, because as you can see, it's only gonna infill from here to here, see? Then the rest gets no infill. Now you see how open this grid is? See how open it is? Now watch what happens when I use the exact same amount of plastic, but I go rectilinear. Now keep in mind, rectilinear is only good for fill. It has no strength. If you give it a squeeze, you'll crush it, okay? But we don't have to worry about that because we're doing three perimeters, so this model is gonna be crazy strong. But if you're doing a model where the infill is there for strength, you need to use grid and not rectilinear. Because rectilinear gives you no strength. See how we have more coverage? Okay, I actually don't think that's enough. I, I think these gaps, see how these, these lines here? I can zoom in. It's one of the problems I have with a bug with Simplify 3D. All right, you see how this section here? It's still printing in open air. It's printing in a gap. I wish the software was smart enough to realize that it's air printing and it would just move this gap to this infill line so that it would be a solid surface. But it doesn't, so you gotta live with that. So we need to do a little more infill there. Infill, let's double it to 20%. Keep in mind, this would take 40% for grid, but because we're using rectilinear, we only need 20%. Actually, I think 20% is what I used when I printed this. There you go. See how I have far more lines now? And there's far more chance of these things grabbing on to coverage. Okay, and you can actually see it here how this is a line, this is a line, but they're on opposing layers. So 20% should be enough. If you want to go crazy, go 25%, but 20% should be enough. And there we go. Now this model will have support. And when you print that curve, let's let, wait for the light to adjust. When you print that curve, let me get some more light here. When you print that curve, it'll have the support it needs to finish and not have any holes in your model. Okay. All right, now we save that G code. Not only do you save that G code, but you save the factory file. So you don't have to reposition this all over again if you mess it up, all right? Save it as, um, you know, Enterprise Ciroc class front, Enterprise Ciroc class rear, because this way you don't have to redo all these processes. So, we get rid of these processes, we add a new process, we're still on CR10, okay, and we rotate this 180 degrees. So X is 90, so now we're gonna go minus 90. And then raise the ship up to zero, Get it up on the deck. Let's go 250. 350. Just keep picking larger numbers until you get close. There we go, we're close. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop it into the deck until that disappears. And there it goes. See the grid? Actually, that got us pretty darn close. See how it's flickering? That means we're right on the edge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower another 0.2 millimeters, so we're gonna go 1.8, 331.8, boom, disappeared. All right, now that object is below the um, grid. Now this is all even around here, so if you're off by 0.1 or 0.2 millimeters, trust me, it doesn't matter. You just need to make sure that's gone. And now, this is well within our print volume, we have another problem. 
these surfaces here are flat, okay? So even though this will print fine with no infill and that will print fine with no infill, this will not print fine with no infill. So we need to add infill to fill in this little tiny section on the bottom here. So again, we go into our variable wizard, all right? And this one is very simple. All we have to do is create one split. Why can't I go any lower? Ah, uh, there's um, a start and stop heights. Turn them off. Okay. Now we can do it. Tools, variable settings wizard. Because we drop this down until we see that pop through. And then we go up until we clear this top surface here. You don't have to clear this ring up here. You just have to clear that top surface so that top surface fills in. That's good enough. So we're gonna add location, split process. Now we have two processes. This first process covers from there down. The second process covers from there up. So we go into the first process and again, we set the infill to rectilinear 20%. That should be plenty. And then we make sure the infill for the rest is 0% since we don't need infill. Select all, continuous. There we go. Now, as you can see, it's all hollow, okay, all hollow, until we get down here. And then we have infill. And that infill will support all of that. You can have the infill turned off until you get up to here if you want, right there. See that spot right there that I created on the right? You're gonna need infill for that, otherwise it's gonna print in midair. So it's only 14 layers. Just leave the infill on until you get past the top of that, boom. Then you turn the infill off and you're good, you're all hollow. Let's see what the difference is. This is nine hours and 56 minutes. So on my printer that's about 12 hours and it's gonna use 0.24 pounds or 110 grams of plastic. If we were to get rid of this process and instead make the whole thing 20% infill, it would be very strong, it'd be very heavy, but now it's gonna take 15 hours or on my printer about 18 or 19 hours, so almost double the time and another 75 grams of plastic. So 0.4 pounds instead of 0.24. When you're doing models this big, it adds up fast. And that's how you split this Starship in half. And as long as your print bed is very flat, these, this surface here will be very flat. And of course your first layer needs to be very good. If your first layer is not good, these models aren't gonna line up very well. So you need to have a nice flat print surface and you need to have a pretty good first layer and then you will be able to take the two halves of your model and join them together. You just glue them together, super glue, that's all. I did the same thing with Voyager, except in Voyager, I needed infill here, in this section here, in order to support the deflector array, okay? Because that was an, an overhang that went back inside. So it would be going into a void where there was no infill inside the model. So I needed an infill, you can see it actually, you can see it in the light. Maybe not on here, actually if I backlight it, you can see it. And I have no idea where my flashlight is, so you're not gonna see it. Can you see it there? Nope, you can't see it. You need a flashlight to see it. Actually, I got the phone. There, see it? See that dark band right there? That's the infill. That's the 25% grid just to give this support. And that's the only place on the entire model where there's any infill. The rest of it is all hollow. That line there is the joint between the two halves. Just that section has infill, the rest print it without infill. I did Voyager the exact same way with one addition. In Voyager, actually I can load that, I can show you, I have it saved. File, open factory file. No, I don't need to save this, I already have it saved. So, Voyager, rear. So this is the Voyager I'm printing now for the CR-10. 
See here, I drop the Voyager into the deck until the nacelles were touching. Okay, now that little patch contact isn't quite enough, so I went into Tinkercad and I made a cylinder 0.2 millimeters tall, 10 millimeters in diameter. This is, of course, blown up for the CR10. And I drop that disc right there on the print bed. Drop <coughs> the discs on the print bed first, move them to the corners, then drop the Voyager. Otherwise, the discs will be here in the middle inside Voyager and you won't be able to click them. Okay? And then I turn on custom supports and I just added supports here because this is the only part, you can't see that. I only added supports for this because that's the only part that's going to need support. Because it, remember, it printed like this from here up. So by having this touching the print bed, it doesn't need supports. Assuming you have a, a well-tuned printer that doesn't vary. Because if your printer bumps into this before it connects to the rest, it's going to knock it over. Okay, But this, uh, a properly assembled and tuned CR10 is very good at this. Okay, This was actually done on the Ender 2. Um, yeah, you can print that big on the Ender 2 because I did it in two parts. It's all thanks to that very tall Z that the Ender 2 has. But anyway, by doing it that way, I was able to get away with no supports for any of this except a little bit of support right here. And this is hollow. And um, then that support broke away and it actually didn't do too bad a job. It doesn't look too rough. It's not bad. And then this half needed no support. Well, actually it does. It does need support. It needs support for the deflector dish. But when your angle is inward, not outward, you need internal support or infill. Okay. That's it. That's all I did. I just dropped Voyager into the bed. The other half of Voyager is the same thing, but flipped over. I, of course, had to run this through NetFab. I tore my hair out until I figured out that it was a multi-port model and I had to run it through NetFab. And there it is. See? Same model. I did add support here on the CR10 because I thought that this bridge section sticking out here, I thought that would be a little too much to expect that to print without support. Okay, I don't know if the support's going to survive this tall. I might add a brim disc down here to support that. I'll see how it holds up. Um, but I might add a brim disc down here, one of those little discs, just to make the support a little, stiff, a little better attached to the bed. And in fact, I should have done that. Uh, that's it. But here, I just added just enough. I can actually print it, or slice it and show it to you. Okay, so here is that deflector array. And you can see, the model is all hollow until you get to that deflector array. Then I have the 20% or 25% rectilinear just to support it. And then once the dish is done, back to zero. Because the rest of the model we already know doesn't need it. And that's it. So I hope that helps you out. And now you know how to take these models and do this yourself. You know, just, you know, if you have a well tuned printer, and you know, like, this overhang is no big deal. That's nothing. That's easy. Okay? These little overhangs here, they're nothing. The printer can handle those because they're supported from the side. So these little things here, no problem. All right? You might get slight errors and stuff like this, but usually, as long as you have enough perimeters, they'll come out okay. We'll find out, but they should come out okay. Um, this one might be a problem. I'm not sure. Because it's going all the way across, it might survive. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to gamble. It's small enough that I'm going to gamble that it's going to work without me having to add another layer of support there. It's probably not a smart gamble since it's a decent amount of plastic to get to that point, but screw it. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But the thing is, by printing this nice and large, more of these details should come out. So, for example, you can see it's going to print these rib lines in the deflector dish, while in the one that I printed on the Ender, 
have don't have those rib lines because there's just not enough there. It's too small. It goes below the resolution threshold of the nozzle. But by printing it larger like this, more of these details can come out. So more of these details that disappear on a smaller model, like these details in here, should actually be visible in this larger model. We'll see. It'll be interesting. But there you go. That's how you split apart a model to make it <coughs> easier to print so that you don't have to do some crazy supports and crazy infill. You can choose how you break apart the model to put, especially if it's symmetrical like this, you know, where it's something you can just cut in half and put the two halves together. You know, something like that works. Hope that helps.